OK, so you want to make a dynamic calendar in Microsoft Excel. Here's my example. You see today's date, which is the 13th of January 2023, is highlighted in a different color. And also the calendar will show bank holidays. You can see that in that yellow color. OK, let's see how we can make this calendar. Now, the first thing you want to do on a separate sheet is get a list of all your bank holidays just as I have done here. You also need a list of all the months of the year and the years that you want to display in your calendar. So get that set up for yourself. Then we'll go back to the calendar. Now I will show you eventually how to apply all this formatting to your calendar, including the formatting for the current date and for bank holidays. But first of all, we're just gonna deal with the drop down list for year and month. So if you select the cell with the year in, and then go to the data tab on your ribbon and then go over to the data tools group you'll see there's a little button here called data validation so if you click on that in the allow list change it from any value to list then click on the source box go to the sheet with your lists on and then what you want to do is select the list of years click on ok so now we have a list of years in our calendar. Now we need to do the same for month. So I'm going to select that cell with the month in. Still on the data tab on my ribbon. In the data tools group, click on my data validation button. Allow a list. Go to the source box. Go to the list sheet. I select my list of months. Click on OK. So I now have a list of years and a list of months. So let's now move on to the formula that we need for our calendar. And eventually we're going to end up with one formula that works for the whole calendar. Now the first formula we're going to create needs to return the first day of the month that we specified here. And to do that, we're going to use a function called date value. A date value is going to convert a text date to its numeric equivalent. Now, to return the text date, the first thing we need to do is specify that we want to return the first of the month. And then I'm going to join that value with the month that I've specified here. And then I'm going to join the month with the year that I've specified here. And I'm using the ampersand symbol to join those values together. So if I close the bracket and press enter, you can see it returns a number. Now, that is the serial number for the date 1st of February 2023. If I change the format of that cell to date, you can see it has returned that date for me. Now, just for clarity, I'm using US format here for my date. So month, day and year. Now, the second formula I need to create needs to work out what day of the week that first day of the month is. And to do that, I can use a function called weekday. So I would take my date, comma, and then specify what numbering system I want to use. So I want Mondays to be the first day of the week, Tuesdays to be the second day of the week, etc. So I can use this numbering system here that is labeled as two. So if I close the bracket and press enter, you can see it calculates that the 1st of February is the third day of the week, which means it must be a Wednesday. And if I look at this calendar here, you can see that that is the case. Now, the third and final formula that we need for our calendar uses the sequence function. And the sequence function is available in Excel 365 or Excel Online. The formula that we're going to use needs to return the correct date in each of these cells. Let's just see how the sequence function works. I'll just widen this column temporarily equals sequence and what it's going to do is return an array of values and you can specify how many rows and how many columns of values you want so in this calendar i want six rows and seven columns so if i close the bracket you can see that it does exactly that for me now i don't want to just return numbers i want to return actual dates and don't forget in excel dates are actually numbers. So for example, the 1st of February 2023 
is equivalent to 44,958. Now, if you don't know how the date numbering system works in Excel, the first of the first 1900 is equivalent to 1. It's the first date that Excel recognises. So this cell here needs to contain this number, which would mean that this cell here would need to contain the number 44,956. Now to get this sequence function to return the correct numbers for us, we can use this start argument. Now if I just pointed at this cell here to specify our start number, and I'll widen these columns so you can see what's happening, you can see that I now have the serial number for the first day of the month in Monday. Now I want it to be in Wednesday. So what I could do is subtract the day of the week value that I've calculated here. So I'm, now I get 44,955. So that's one day too early. So what I can do is just add one to my calculation. And now I get 44,956. And the Wednesday sale now contains the serial number for the 1st of February 2023. Now, obviously, I don't want to show these numbers, but what I can do is select all these cells, Control-1 on my keyboard, go to Custom, and change the format to D, which will return the number of the day of the month. OK, so I'm just going to resize these cells. Now, at the moment, we have three separate formulas that we're using for our calendar. We could combine them all into a single formula. Let's first of all look at this formula. You can see it refers to cell K1. So I could take the formula in K1, copy it, and paste it into this formula. Now, let's go back to our sequence function. In fact, what I'll do is just widen this column. And you can see that we're referring to cell K1 and K2 in this formula. Well, I already have the formula in K1 on my clipboard, so I just paste it in. And then I need the formula for K2. So if I take that, copy it from the formula bar, and paste it over this cell reference. So now, if I delete these two formulas here, you can see that my calendar still works. Let's change it back to February 2023 to see that that is the case. OK, so that covers the formulas for our calendar. Let's now look at the formatting. OK, let's start off with the basic formatting for our calendar. We'll start off with the first row here. And I'm just going to apply a light grey background. Second row with the days of the week. I'm going to have a slightly darker background. And I'll change the font colour to white. I'm going to apply a grey background to these cells. And with them still selected, Control-1 on my keyboard. I've gone to the Borders tab here. I'm going to select this thick border here. Change the colour to white. Apply it to inside borders. Click on OK. I'm going to format Saturday and Sunday with a light blue background. And if you want to take the grid lines off of your sheet, you can go to View and untick grid lines here. So the next thing I need to do is to make it clear which days don't belong to the current month. For example, those days and from this day onwards. Now I can do this with the help of the month function. So for example, if I clicked in this date here, it would tell me that the date belongs to the month of January, the first month of the year. OK, so is that month not equal to the month that I'm specifying in my calendar? So if I use the date value function again, 1 ampersand, the month I'm specifying here, and the year I'm specifying here, that would tell me that this date here is indeed not in the specified month. Now I am going to need to lock the reference to the month and the year. And you'll see why. Because now, 
if I copy this across this row, you can see that I get two trues for the two days that are not in the current month. But then I start to get falses because these dates are within this month. And the reason I had to lock these two cell references is because I need to copy this formula across. And as I do so, it still needs to refer to these two cells here. So this formula can be used for our conditional formatting. So I'm going to copy it. Select the cells that I want to apply the conditional formatting to. Home tab on my ribbon, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine which cells to format and paste in my formula. Format values where this formula returns true. Now the format I'm going to apply relates to the background color. I'm going to leave pattern color as automatic, pattern style, I'm going to use this pattern. I'm going to go to font, and change the font color to white. Click on OK. Click on OK. And you can see that it's applied that formatting, clearly showing which days don't belong to the current month. I can just get rid of these formulas. I just set these up on the sheet, not because I need them there ultimately, but just to test and practice my formula. OK, the next thing I need to do is show the bank holidays in my calendar. And if you remember, we listed our bank holidays here. Let's move to a month that actually has bank holidays, let's say April. And what I'm going to do is use the match function. And I'm going to look up the first date in my calendar within the bank holiday list. And I'm going to lock that reference. And I'm using F4 to do that see my formula up in the formula bar and my match type is exact match which is zero now i'm getting an na error at the moment because march the 27th is not a bank holiday but if i copy this down and copy across you can start to see i'm getting some numbers now these numbers coincide with the position of the dates that are bank holidays it's essentially returning the numeric position of those dates within this list. Now, I'm not really interested in the numeric position of the bank holiday within the list of bank holidays, but I am interested in the fact that I'm returning a number. That tells me where there's a bank holiday. So if I put this within the isNumber function, which is essentially a logical test, it will now return true or false true if the date is a bank holiday. So I can now use this formula as the basis of my conditional formatting. So I'm going to copy it, select all the cells that I want to apply it to, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine which cells to format and paste my formula into this box. And then I can go to format, fill and I'm just going to use this color here to represent bank holidays. If I click on OK, click on OK, you can see it's picked up the bank holidays in my calendar. If I change it to May, it will also pick out the bank holidays for that particular month and I can get rid of these formulas. So the last thing left to do is to indicate the current date on our calendar so I'm going to move back to January. So I'm on Friday the 13th of January, so I want that to be highlighted. And to do this, we can use the today function within our conditional formatting formula, and that returns today's date, keeping it up to date. So I'm going to select all these cells again, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine which cells to format, and I would say equals B4, B4 being the active cell, the first cell that I've selected, equals today. Okay, so for the format, I'm going to change the border color. I'll have a solid border, gold, 
I'm going to put that around the outline of the cell. And I'll also go to the font tab, and change the color to gold. Click on OK, click on OK, and there we are. You can see that it clearly shows the current date. OK, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.